It's 3.15, and that means it's time for... The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. That's right. Welcome once again to The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. I'm your host, Bill McNeil, and you're probably wondering exactly what is The Real Deal today. Hey, good question. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and it's time for some comic industry news. Today, we're going to be talking about some new releases or upcoming releases for DC Comics. Now, I want to set up this, this up front before I get into to the details of these, these books and what we're going to talk about. It does feel like now that DC has really scaled their line down with the, the Infinite Frontier launch, they're only, I think, putting out like maybe up. Is it even, are they even putting out 30, maybe 35 comic books? The entire month and they're not growing the line all that much moving forward it does when they have these new comics that they're that they comics that they that they announced they're doing it does feel like they're a little bit more important than it did before and i think that's probably a smart strategy these uh two comics i'm about to talk about i'm actually pretty excited for it. the first up is green arrow 80th anniversary celebration obviously dc has been heavily invested in these 80th anniversary like 100 for age uh, spectacular comics. They started out with like Action Comics 1000, Detective Comics 1000, you know, Batman 80th anniversary. Then we got like Green Lantern, Joker. I think there was a Catwoman 80th anniversary. So we've been getting a lot of these 80th anniversaries. They've been a big hit. People have really enjoyed them. They've rolled out the red carpet as far as the variant covers. This one's going to have a buy the decades variant. For, for Green Arrow, and people have been going out and buying them, and they're making a lot of money off of these. So I'm not surprised that they're going in on Green Arrow number or Green Arrow as an 80th anniversary. I am still disappointed they didn't do a Hawkman 80th anniversary. Obviously, we did celebrate that right here on the channel for, with Hawk Worlds, but it didn't seem like DC thought it was as important as we did. And the other one, one of the comic books I'm really looking forward to, with a caveat, is there's a new Batman Reptilian black label comic book with garth enos and liam sharp like oh my goodness you can't as far as like creative teams that's like whew, that's about as exciting as it gets for me now there's there's a, a little issue with it we'll get into that here in a second but i'm i'm pretty pumped up for these two gonna have the details as far as the creative teams all the creators on the green arrow 80th anniversary there's a couple of uh, omissions that i think are important i want to talk about and then we'll get into that uh, batman Black Label series, which I think is going to be pretty cool. Now, before I get into the details, I do want to say, if you're just visiting, you haven't subscribed to Thinking Critical YouTube yet, but you like the comic book industry, you like news, you like reviews, maybe you just like discussion, debate, this is likely the YouTube channel for you. Make sure you subscribe to Thinking Critical YouTube. Hit the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Thumbs down if you don't. Definitely want to hear your thoughts on the Green Arrow 80th anniversary special, as well as this upcoming Batman Reptilian Black Label book. All right, so let's get right into this Green Arrow 80th anniversary celebration. It's going to be 100 pages, and these are the creators. Mike Grell, absolutely. you got to have Mike Grell. He's probably the, the greatest Green Lantern writer of all times, likely. Jeff Lemire, certainly he had a large part in revitalizing the Green Lantern character back, Green Lantern, Green Arrow character back in the day. Phil Hester, Otto Schmidt, certainly one of the artists most known with Green Arrow. Ben Percy, he was the writer during DC Rebirth. He's the one that was the Green Arrow kind of Rebirth writer. Tom Taylor, I find this one interesting. I don't know that he's heavily associated with Green Arrow, but Green Arrow and Black Canary, who is the Green Lantern in his deceased universe, that was a huge story arc, and she ended up saving Green Arrow when they, they kind of wanted to put him down at one point. I wonder if his Green Arrow story is going to be in that deceased universe. I really hope it is because that would be really cool. Devin Grayson, Stephanie Phillips. So they're putting a lot of their new writers, that the new talent that they're uh, rolling out with Infinite Frontier, maybe not completely associated with the Green Arrow character. Stephanie Phillips, she's the writer for Harley Quinn. Mariko Tamaki, she's the new Detective Comics writer. Ram V is the writer on Swamp Thing and Catwoman. Vida Ayala, I don't think she has any ongoing work. She's doing some work over at the X-Men line. But we've seen Vida Al in almost all of these um, issues, 750 and 80th anniversary specials as of late. Also, Nicola Scott, uh, Chris Mitten, Laura Braga, Max uh, Fumirara, Brandon Thomas, another one of the writers that uh, they're heavily invested in as far as Infinite Frontier. And it says and more. I don't imagine we're going to get these. So there are some, some big name creators that they're not mentioning. 
like how do you do a green arrow 80th anniversary without kevin smith like after mike grell is there a better green arrow writer than kevin smith maybe it's, he's definitely in the debate as one of the truly great uh green arrow writers of all time also neil adams he's still doing work with dc comics he's got that Raz al ghoul miniseries going on right now why not get a neil adams in there that would have been great also obviously they did want to get some female uh creative talent on this green arrow series they picked you know the ones that they thought were the cream of the crop as far as what's in infinite frontier why not and dissenting certainly she's more associated i believe with her work with marvel but she did work on green arrow she's currently writing she's still uh she fell a little bit, a little bit behind on that I think it's called Seeds Independent Book, but Innocenti's out there, and she's really important to the comic book industry. And it's a little disappointing they couldn't find a spot for her. As far as contemporary writers, I think Andy Diggle's Green Arrow work is really good. Would love seeing Judd Winnick, Chuck Dixon. Come on, you, forgive Chuck. He's a good guy. I think you could have found a spot for Chuck Dixon in the Green Arrow 80th anniversary. Andrea Sorrentino, I didn't see his name in there, so I'm imagining the jeff lemire portion of the green arrow like story in here isn't going to be illustrated by andrea sorrentino i find that really disappointing those two it's almost like um it's almost like ed brubaker and sean phillips they should be together <laughs> and i it, it disappoints me if we don't see andrea sorrentino on this book also juan Ferre is another artist i would have loved to have seen on this uh, i love him as an artist i think he would have been a good uh good pick the main cover is from Dan Moore. Obviously, he is the artist on the Detective Comics series. But they are doing some pretty cool by the decades variants. The 1940s variant is from Michael Cho. The 1950s variant, Daniel Warren Johnson. Why couldn't we get a Daniel Warren Johnson story that he wrote and illustrated? That would have been awesome. We do get a Neil Adams 1960s variant. Uh, Derek Chu is doing the 70s variant. Gary Frank 1980s variant. I haven't seen him yet, but I have a feeling, just a feeling, that that will likely be the cover that everyone goes for. Gary Frank is, is amazing. Howard Porter, the 90s variant. Jen Bartell, the 2000s variant. And Simone DeMio on the 2010s variant. This is going to be a $10 comic book. These 80th anniversary 100-page spectaculars are not cheap, my friends. They seemingly have only gone up in price. I, I think the original 80th anniversaries were like 8 bucks. I think they're just testing the waters like, well, they paid eight dollars. Let's see about about nine dollars. Yeah, they paid that. Let's see about ten. So I, I imagine eventually we will see the readers breaking point, but they haven't hit that yet. And this will be out on June 29th. So I think this is really exciting. They're not able to do, I guess, these 100 page spectaculars for all the characters. Certainly wish they would have done something for Hawkman and Hawk and Hawk Girl, Hawk Woman now. But they did not do that. So if you're a Green Arrow fan, definitely be looking out for this. Although, I, like I said, it disappoints me. How do you not get Kevin Smith in there? Come on. Get with the program, DC Comics. But this should do really well, and I think it's great. Why do, not, why do we not have an ongoing Green Arrow series from Brian Michael Bennis and Alex Malik? Bennis is struggling finding a spot where he works in DC Comics. They're certainly not going to give him a character like Batman after his struggles with Superman and kind of turning off the audience. Why not give him a Green Arrow character? I feel like that would be right in his wheelhouse. Let him work with Green Arrow and Black Canary. With Alex and Levon Art, it would be perfect. But I don't know. They, they want him to fail on Justice League. But those are my thoughts on Green Arrow and its current state real quickly on DC Comics. It's surprising they he does not have an ongoing Next up, we do have this really cool, and if you, I did not have any idea about this, but if you told me a week ago, there's going to be a Garth Ennis, Liam Sharp, Black Label book, I would have been like, oh, wow, you know, what an amazing creative pairing, you know, I think Garth Ennis is great. Everything he writes is impactful, it's, it's take no prisoners, he does not care, he, everything is, is, it's like, it's raw. It's uh, just like his writing style. He does, he does, he does not cut corners. He's willing to challenge his audience with some of the things that his characters do. And I think that's great. Liam Sharp, probably is he the most underrated artist in the entire industry? His work on Green Lantern, in my opinion, is the only thing that was uh, redeeming about that 
Grant Morrison run. That's just my opinion. But if if you want to see Liam Sharp at his best, he did this Batman, Wonder Woman. It might be Wonder Woman, Batman, Brave and the Bold series where he wrote it and illustrated it. And it's all like Batman and Wonder Woman cloaked in Celtic lore. And it's fabulous. And it's one of the best illustrated comics I've read in a long time. Now, unfortunately, it looks from my my eye that this is not going to be traditional comic book art from Liam Sharp. It looks like he's painting. He's obviously a very proficient painter, and he's very skilled. I personally like his his line art better as far as drawing and, and of that nature. It's really exciting. The level of detail and the creativity that he brings onto the page when he's drawing traditional comic art style. Uh, it's a little disappointing. That's my one caveat. The one thing I'm not truly excited about this Batman Reptilian series is because he's painting it rather than drawing it. Now, obviously, when they did Batman Damned, the very first Black Label comic book from Lee Bermijo and, and Brian Azzarello, Lee Bermijo painted that. So certainly with this format, they've done painting in the past. I just wish that he had drawn the, he was drawing this comic book. It's still going to look great. It's just it's not going to look as good as it could have been. But Garth Ennis and Liam Sharp on a, on a series together is just almost like a dream come true. This is a six-issue limited series going to be on Black Label, so maybe they'll get to go a little bit further. You need the Black Label for, an, for a writer like Garth Ennis, just like you needed Max at Marvel, just so, so you could let readers know, hey, there's some crazy stuff going to happen here. And it's going to be coming out June 22nd, and they're going to be 32 pages, $4.99. I do not believe that these are going to be in the prestige format. I think this is going to be normal size uh, comic book just because of the, the size of the, the covers that they've shown us in the art. And this is what the story is going to be about. Gotham City is filled with murderous creatures who stalk the shadows, four villains with murderous impulses who strike fear into the hearts of every man, woman, and child in the city. But what strikes fear into the hearts of those who terrorize the city? It used to be Batman, but something far more frightening than a mere man has begun stalking the shadows, and it's after Gotham's villains. How savage must a monster be to haunt the dreams of monsters? So that is the solicitation that comes with it. Sounds very exciting. I imagine when I saw the Batman reptilian name, and then I, I saw the the um, the cover, I was like, oh, it's a Killer Croc story. I don't think so. This is this feels like it's something bigger, and Killer Croc is probably going to be one of the villains that it's hunting. Or is it going to be an offshoot? I don't know. It, is this a Godzilla-like monster? It certainly looks like the guy Godzilla-like poster from the, the early 2000s Godzilla reboot with Matthew Broderick. Or was that like 98? Maybe it was 98 or 99. But that's a truly awful movie. But that's what this cover reminds me of, is that poster which is probably not a good thing because that movie is so bad. Now, like I mentioned, I do wish that Liam Sharp was drawing this comic and not painting it, but it is it is going to look great. We, we see it, it's a very, very dark Gotham City. The images still look look pretty good. They're a little bit more blurried out than I'd, have, I'd, I'd want. Just because Liam Sharp's, when he draws, there's so many details and everything's just so cool. But I think this is going to be great. It's certainly going to have a lot of... Uh, a lot of tone to it. It's going to be very dark. It's going to feel like you're reading Batman in seven, which is essentially what the new movie, the Batman is going to be in. So should be very exciting stuff. What are your thoughts? Which series are you more excited for? Are you more excited for green arrow 80th anniversary? Are you more excited for uh, Garth Ennis and Liam Sharp on Batman reptilian? I'm leaning towards Garth Ennis and Liam Sharp just because I think Garth Ennis is such a good good uh, creator. His recent Punisher Soviet story was really good, but you you couldn't have a weak stomach because they do some graphically crazy stuff in that book. And I hopefully he brings that to this comic series as well. But I'm definitely going to be reading both of them, definitely going to be reviewing both of them right here on the channel. So this is good news. Obviously, with the amount of information that's being released regarding the June uh, releases for DC Comics. I'm expecting the solicitations to come out on Monday or Tuesday. So early next week, you'll also be getting a full solicitation video where I kind of go through the entire lineup of DC Comics, tell you what my what I think. Maybe can we glean anything from the solicitations? What are the cool covers and all that stuff? But today we've got Green Arrow 80th anniversary, 
and Batman Reptilian with Garth Enos and, and Garth Enos. Garth Enos. Garth Edis and Liam Sharp. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see y'all later. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.